Welcome back to John's Films, your home for DaVinci Resolve benchmarks, hardware recommendations, and videos you just can't find anywhere else. Be sure to hit subscribe below and hit that bell icon so you catch all my future videos. Today's video is a build of the month here in November. This is the most excited I've been about a build of the month in a long time. Why? New graphics cards from AMD, new graphics cards from Nvidia, and new processors from AMD. By the way, AMD's been killing it. Now, I'm not going to recommend an AMD graphics card today. They have not released enough technical details for me to be able to make that choice. I can tell you, though, the new NVIDIA graphics cards look to be pretty darn solid, so I'm not upset about that. The new processors, on the other hand, from AMD, wow, that's going to be your answer. So let's just get into here and figure out what looks like the best bang for the buck between $1,500 and $2,000. Here we go. Just one more teaser, the 6800 XT and Fanboy, not really, I, I have owned NVIDIA cards for the last 10 years, but the 16 gigabytes of dedicated GDDR6 video RAM is something that is very intriguing to me. I want to see what it does to benchmarks in DaVinci Resolve. I like the way that this thing is shaping up. I just don't have enough details to recommend one of these cards, nor can you buy one. To kick things off, a 12-core processor on the new 5900X is a fantastic choice. It has a 20% uplift over the prior 3900X, still has 12 cores. It boosts to a higher core speed. In fact, they've caught some of these boosting just up to 5 gigahertz. It beats the Intel 10 900K in single core performance. That's important. That was where Intel previously held on to the gaming title. At this point, though, uh, <laughs> the 14 nanometer process that Intel is using, whether it's three pluses, six pluses, whatever they're calling it. If you haven't paid attention, Intel keeps putting a plus on the end of their 14 nanometer fabrication process because they've been unable to move to anything smaller. AMD, by the way, this is a seven nanometer process. Yeah, it's that bad. From a cooler perspective, the 5900X does not come with a cooler. And so what are we going to do with that? Well, this gives us the opportunity to go look for something fun. On the processor, because of the number of cores, I'm looking for a 360 millimeter radiator. We'll take it longer to get saturated. I'm looking for one that's more reasonably priced. The X73 at $180 looks like a good mix for me. At this point, the X570 or the B550 are the only motherboards that can rock with this new platform. They are going to be updating some of the older motherboards BIOSes to be able to support these chips. What I'm going to look for, considering the 12 cores, is something with a solid power delivery. I want an ATX form factor for the upgradability. And I'm looking for something maybe priced around $200. My wish list would include a front USB-C and possibly two or three NVMe drives. Let's see what we got. This motherboard's interesting. I haven't looked at the power design too closely, but it looks like 14 chokes and 10 capacitors. That would mean they're using doublers in there and then the extras are for the memory. I think I'm going to stay away from that one for the moment and we will go look for, again, something in the right price point. Let's sort by that. Come down to about 200-ish, 220. I have like the MSI Pro Carbon motherboard. I had uh, an X470 version of that board previously. Let's see what that looks like. This board should have good RAM compatibility, which is always a search, hunt, and peck. I'm going to jump over and see it on MSI's motherboard page because I'll really be able to understand it by looking more closely at it. It has a front USB-C. It looks to have six SATA ports. I see plenty of connectors here. I'm looking for my USB 3. There we go. I see one M.2, two to M.2s. These are Gen 4. Oof, a weak power delivery. Guess you got to give up somewhere, don't you? Let's see what they, they advertise as their power delivery. Probably 10 plus 2. 12 plus 2 plus 1. I think they're using doublers in here. Yeah, dual power connectors. <laughs> okay. All right, so they've got six doublers to 12 stages uh, to 12 chokes. That's probably fine. You know, this is on the B550 chipset. You're not going to be overclocking on this chipset. I think this is going to be a good bang for the buck, considering the USB-C on the front side of that. So let's pick that one and jump into it. Here we are for 220. I'll add that to our list. And we're now already 
I can tell you we're going to blow this budget out of the water, but what are you going to do, right? So here we go, jumping in. Now we need to figure out the memory, and for that we have to go back to the motherboard page. We have to jump down to the second bar and go to support. Under support, we're looking for compatibility, and here we can now get a clear picture of what is supported in terms of processor, but also what's going to be supported in terms of memory. So I'm going to go to Matisse, let's see, RX 4000. They do not have their 5000 memory support here yet. They do support uh, the Vermeer processors. I'm going to take a stab at the Matisse memory working on this because it would be stable enough with this board. And to that end, I'm going to put 64 gigabytes in this thing. Actually, at this price point, I'm going to put 32 gigabytes into this thing. So we're going to put 32 gigabytes. Maybe we'll do it in two sticks if we can afford it. And that'll allow us to, one, buy higher clocked RAM um, for a better price. Let's see what this is. 3600 3, megahertz RAM. Uh, let's find out what this is. Oh, yeah. So here we are with the 64 gigabyte kit from Corsair for 280. That's 232s. Not bad, but if we go to 32 gigabytes, which is really all you're going to need for video editing at this point, it would sure be nice if you could get 64 for any extensive fusion work you're doing or if you're just crazy with your Chrome tabs. But let's see. It's interesting. They've got it listed at 32, but it's actually the 64 gigabyte kit. Looks like they're saying per socket but all right so i'm going to flip this to 32 there we go should give me the 32 gigabyte part at 115 dollars ram is cheap right now people 3600 megahertz ram for this is incredible all right so let's do it this one looks good 124 dollars for this business back to pc part picker i'm going to pop the memory skew up here 269 heck no Oh, yeah, that's right. There we go. Add that to my list. And now we're really rocking. Storage-wise, I'm going to buy one Evo NVMe drive. This is a one terabyte drive. It's going to be our operating system and DaVinci Resolve drive. And then we'll add more storage. This is just going to be an SSD. This will run our project footage as well as we can scratch on this as well. At this price point, should work great. So to that, I'll type SSD, search. I'm going to sort by price per gigabyte. And then I'm going to go down to, I've used some of these. This doesn't have what I like in it, the caching that's behind it. So I'm going to go to, let's see here. If you're going to go a data, I like the 760 here. This one will work great. All right. Add that in. What's our price at now, people? 1316 without a graphics card. All right. Let's do it. I did say up to 2000 ish, ish, ish. In this build, there's nothing we can go for other than the 3070. It's a perfect $500 card at this point. And if you can find one for actual MSRP, then you've done a fantastic job. Heck, if you could find one at all, you're winning. But we're going to go with this Strix just because it's on top. And I'm going to put the price in there at what it should be, which is around $549. You'll find them price gouging higher up on the list, but here we are. And that gives us 1873. Now we're going to go pull a case um, at the budget. We've got the Leanne Lee Landcool 2 Mesh is a, uh, overpriced. They're asking too much for it now. You can see here the Landcool 2 is $86. That's a good choice. Power supply. With these components, we need around a 700, 750 watt power supply. Yes, that's overkill. No, I'm not mad about that. Full modularity, Corsair RM Perfect 124. Finally, you're going to add your own software, monitors, and whatnot. This looks like a done deal at $2,085.60. If you did a little smarter shopping around the cooler, you went with that $90, you'd be able to drop under that. If you did a little bit more looking for a non-fully modular power supply, you could probably get that down to around $90. But this is what I would buy. I think this is right at the sweet point for DaVinci Resolve and would be a fantastic system.
Now, to save many of you commenting, John, if you just buy a 3900X, you could get it for $400. Let me tell you why I like these AMD Ryzen processors so much. The new 5000 series continues the chiplet design. Well, what's that? That's these two things right here. You see, when you're building processors, you actually build a whole bunch of them together at one time on a giant wafer. And one of the things that determines the price of the processor is what your yield is coming out of that wafer. So you'll get parts or imperfections as much as you want it to be a perfect clean room with fantastic connections between every one of the little transistors in the silicone. You want it to be perfect, but it's difficult to get it perfect at all times. So the wafer, which might have hundreds of processors on it, when you've got a bunch of really big processors, say it's got 10 processors on it. If you get one imperfection in those giant processors, you've already killed off a tenth of your profit because it will not work. Hmm, okay. But what if there's a thousand processors there? Well, if one goes bad, one little speck of something in your, wa in your wafer, you're now only losing a thousandth of your profit. AMD figured this out and said, we could build a bunch of little chips. We're going to call them chiplets. They'll each have eight cores in them. So here you go with eight cores, another eight cores. And these eight cores are going to be able to process individually. They'll be able to uh, boost individually and they all run at their own speeds, though they're generally governed by the heat that gets generated by the chiplet and then by the overall processor as a whole. So to do that, they developed what's called their memory bus or their infinity fabric, and that is the communication layer between the processors and the onboard memory, which is this big hunkin' thing right here. In the past, the cores on this chiplet could not as efficiently talk to the memory that was being used by the other chiplet. It was fast, it was great, but we're seeing a significant boost in the Ryzen 5000 series because they've now been able to open up the memory so that it's available to all cores. Well, what does that do for me? Well, the reason cores exist is so that they can divide and conquer. Hey, I'm gonna go do this, you go do that, we'll meet up at the end and we'll get our stuff done. Well, that's great. What happens when you've got a piece of data that needs to be the singular version of the truth? I need to know exactly how many hit points this character has so that when they get hit one more time, they die. Well, I, I just segmented out the work. I've got 16 cores and they're all working on something that has influence over whether or not this guy dies. And so in this place, we've now accelerated the memory access for both cores so that they can both equally access that single bit of memory rather than in the past when memory was in some ways tied directly to, and when I say memory, I mean the cache on the processor, was directly tied to a chiplet. And so there was a roundabout way that it took to go get that static copy of that data for every other core that wanted to access it that wasn't on the chiplet of choice. They've now fixed that, it's been optimized, and these processors are seen in gaming specifically 21% faster. In Resolve, I have not had a chance to benchmark it. However, with Render, I expect it to be about 20% faster as well. So that's why I'm so fired up about these things. Let's hope we can get a better supply chain of them and make sure that they're available for everybody to buy as soon as possible. Needless to say, it's an exciting time to be here in the CPU market. Thanks for watching. Really appreciate you sticking around to the end of the video. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell below. If this has been extremely helpful, feel free to buy me a coffee. Link is below. All proceeds go to hardware for benchmarking. Thanks for watching and have a great day.